How's it going, everybody? This is Beat the Bush. This is an all powers R600 portable power station in beige with about 300 watt hours of capacity, and you can buy optionally with this 100 watts of solar panel. There are a lot of options out there to buy something with this amount of capacity, a lot of 100 watt solar panels out there. The standout difference here is that this one has a 600 watt continuous output. Having only 299 watt hours means that it's pushing those cells in there at 2C. What does this exactly mean? It can drive something that's 300 watts continuous for one entire hour, or let's say you push it to the maximum and run it at 600 watts, then you can run it for about 30 minutes. They show a car refrigerator is about 40 watts. Refrigerators might do something like on for 30 minutes, off for 30 minutes. So you actually have to look at what is the average usage. Full-size refrigerators can vary anywhere between 50 watts and 150 watts, depending on how old they are. Portable refrigerators, the ones where you bring camping with you, they might range about 50 watts per hour. A juicer might be around 400 watts. This can do 600 watt continuous, 1200 watts surge. Surge means it can supply 1200 watts for a short period of time. How short? Like a second or two. And that really depends on the power station itself. Televisions, 100 watts, I agree with that. Lights, 30 watts. My typical light bulb's around eight watts each. It says a kettle is 120 watts here. The kettle I use at home is around 1500 watts. So this is not gonna run that. The type of kettle they're talking about is like a portable kind where it doesn't use as much electricity. So you really gotta know how much your particular appliance actually use in order to see if it actually will run on this. A fan, 50 watts, laptop, about 60 watts, yep. Camera, about 10 watts. And then in the picture, it also has a toaster. A toaster is usually around 1500 watts. Will it run that? No. So this gives you an idea of what's possible when using this. They have an older version and a new version. The new version has quieter fans. It has this quiet mode that you can set up in their app. It makes it so that when it's charging, it's not as loud. They changed it from a 300 watt solar input to a 220 watt solar input. If you buy a 220 watt solar panel, it's essentially gonna charge this from zero to 100% full within two hours. And the rest of the day, you're still gonna get sun, it's gonna hit the solar panels, all that energy is gonna be wasted. Sometimes though, if you only want to set up your solar panel for a short period of time, you want it to charge very quickly, then that might be useful to get a big solar panel. Personally, I think even 100 watts of solar charging is plenty for a 300 watt hour power station. The base unit comes with the power station, the power cord, instruction manual. Press the on button to turn it on. 120 watt car adapter port. Two pure AC sine wave output ports that goes up to 600 watts total. Two USB-C ports that goes up to 100 watts. Two USB-A ports that goes up to 18 watts. Three modes of the light, low, high, flashing, and off. Turn on the AC with this AC button here. Turn on the DC with this DC button. The DC turns on these ports, the car port, and also the 15 watt wireless charging up here. On the left side, there's nothing. On the right side, there are input ports. Lift up this panel. It doesn't have those bulky AC adapter, it's just a cable. It includes an overload circuit breaker. You just need to press it to reset it. This XT60 port, you can put solar in it or connect the car adapter, 12 to 60 volt, 8.8 .8 amp max. And the bottom, you have rubber feet, which is important. They don't always have it in all power stations. Input and output specs if you guys are interested. Keep in mind this device is connected via Bluetooth, not Wi-Fi. I noticed the Bluetooth connection is not as persistent as I like it to be. If you don't use the app for a while or this powers down, you have to reconnect it in the app. It doesn't come with the XC60 to car adapter. Personally, I don't use that cable all that often anyway, but if you need that cable, you can buy it separately for a small price. The lamp is connected to the AC output, but it's being used as a UPS, so it's connected to the wall right now. I'm gonna pull the plug on the power supply, watch the lamp flicker slightly. I'm getting a switch over time of about 25 milliseconds. This is not exactly the 10 milliseconds as shown in the manual. Right when it cuts off, the voltage drops to zero almost immediately. So there's very little capacitance at the output to hold the voltage somewhat steady. And then 25 milliseconds later, the battery inverter kicks in and it starts the AC voltage output again. When I plug it back in, it takes a few seconds for it to connect back to the AC. One 1,000, two 1,000. 3-1000 right there 
and you see that this continuity right here we'll zoom into that it takes about 10 milliseconds before it reconnects it to the grid power supply let me do it again here it looks a little bit different because we cut it off and then when it starts again in 12.2 milliseconds it continues measuring a third time it's 13.2 milliseconds first i drained it via the ac port at maximum 600 watts i was able to get 260 watt hours of usable energy out of it this represents 87 percent of usable capacity so why is it less than the full 299 watt hours is because they have to turn on the ac there are inefficiencies in converting the DC energy into AC. So you get about a 13% loss right there. If you want to get the most energy out of this, you want to use the 12 volt port. Draining from this car adapter port at 10 amps, 120 watts, I was able to get 277.64 watt hours. This represents about 92% of usable capacity, a little bit more than if you were to use the AC output. If you have appliances that that can either use AC or DC, choose to go with the DC because it's more energy efficient. Next, I charged it in normal mode. It took 381 watt hours to charge it, which represents 127% of the capacity. Going in, you're gonna waste about 27%. Going out of the DC port, you'll waste about 8%. So even if you're really efficient about this, you're gonna use about 35% more energy than if you just took your energy straight from the wall. Charging in normal mode of 300 watts, it took me one hour and 33 minutes. Charging in fast mode of 400 watts, it took me 74 minutes and 14 seconds. The 100 watt panel has a handle at the top. It comes in two pieces that folds out and there are hooks on each corner for you to secure it. The stands are Velcroed on and you can pull out. It allows for a little bit of angle adjustment. You can go like that or like that. The solar panel itself has standard MC4 connectors and it comes with an adapter cable that changes it to XT60 for the power station. Alternatively, you can connect it to a barrel connector. It comes in various sizes. You can pull one out and adapt it to different sizes to your needs. For the most part, you don't have to use this and we can just connect it to our XT60 connector. Now I got some full sun over here. Let me connect it to our power station. I can't really angle it any higher or lower. I can go like this possibly. Can get about 66 watts now. And if I tilt it a higher, 73 watts. If you guys are interested in this power station, check out my Amazon affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time. <laughs>